All right, let's finish this off. Measurement and certainty, the fifth video, the fourth was how to use a vernier caliper and select caliper jaws. Uh, we can talk about something, I'll give you some rules. I won't prove them, you can use calculus to prove them. Uh, kind of go with it, get acquainted with it, that'll be adequate for now. You can, of course, learn more if you want. But how do we propagate the uncertainty? That is, we take measurements and we make calculations with those. For example, we measure lengths, and maybe we measure time. So, so distance over time is going to give an average speed. We measure mass. We combine these measurements and we get calculated results. Well, how good is our calculated result? How trustworthy is it? How much uncertainty have we got? Well, it always builds. Remember, it always you can't cancel your uncertainty because that's the fuzz, and the fuzz grows. So, what we're going to do here is propagation of uncertainty, uh, how you use measured or given values, if you're giving them exams and homework, the numbers, when uh, you use measured values in the equations, and how do you find the uncertainty of your result? Okay, so sometimes an equation, of course, we add and subtract numbers, measured numbers, data. Uh, smallest numbers, uh, oops, excuse me. When we add and subtract, we can use two ways. You can just look at the number of decimal places, not sig figs when you add and subtract, decimal places, smallest number. Or you use absolute uncertainty in the equation I'll show you. If you're multiplying or dividing measured numbers, then you either look at the smallest number of significant figures or you look at the, or use the relative uncertainty. Okay, so I'll show you how. In just a moment, you can take notes and just practice and check out. Okay, let's swing over here, just a little preparatory uh, comment, a reminder of uh, basic math. Keep in mind that multiplying by a number or dividing is shorthand for addition, that is, Three, some number three times a is the same as a plus a plus a. It's just shorthand. So multiplying by a pure number is the same as addition. It's an addition rule. Uh, exponents are shorthand for multiplication and division. So b to the fourth is shorthand for b times b times b times b. b to the negative two is one over b times b. And so in this case, we'll use the multiplication and division rules for propagation. In this case, we'll use the addition and subtraction rules. So, just uh, go ahead and go with it. I know you'll probably still be a little fuzzy on this, but just work it and you'll be good. Okay, let's, let's swing over and talk about what happens when you take some numbers that you've measured, or have been measured, and working with them, someone gave them to you, and you put them in an equation, and you get a result. What happens when those numbers are added or subtracted in equations? And, and yes, this can get really messy. Don't worry about that. You're not going to get super messy examples right now. And people get paid to do this. It's a pain. Uh, so we won't make too much work of it, but you should be very acquainted. Number one, if you're just working with the numbers and you don't have a plus minus uncertainty, then what you need to focus on is not the sig figs, but the number of decimal places. So the number of decimal places after you've added or subtracted is equal to the smallest number decimal places. This is hard, the words. On the right side of the decimal point, how many decimal places on the right side of the decimal point in any of the individual terms? Now, I've stolen from our, our lab, and, and Jeff has you know, this, done this nicely, uh, worded this nicely. For example, 108.4 kilograms plus, I better be adding the mass to it, uh, plus 31.28 kilograms. Now let's see, what is that? Uh, easy to do the addition. 139.68 kilograms. Don't, put, don't forget the unit or else we don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but this one only goes out one decimal place 
then this one goes out too, meaning that this is good to a tenth of a kilogram, this is good to a hundredth. This one is less certain in the value here, so this is the only one I can depend on. Now in this case, we use rounding rules, so the answer that you would give, now personally I would write this and then put an arrow, not equal, but put an arrow and say 139.7 kilograms is the proper result here. Okay, and so with adding and subtracting like that, because right, I've clearly used two different instruments, something that's good to a tenth of a kilogram here, and something that's good to a hundredth of a kilogram. And so too, I could use uh, a vernier caliper, and I could use a meter stick, and those have different levels of precision there. Okay, so adding and subtracting, look at the decimal places. However, if you're adding or subtracting values with uh, plus minus some uncertainty, what you've got to do is, first, all your measured values, or whatever uh, you've been given, has to be, the uncertainties have to be converted to absolute uncertainty. Now, a notation I'm not that too thrilled with, with is that absolute uncertainty can often be given in the letter lowercase e, and that looks like error to me, and I don't want to confuse error and uncertainty, but nonetheless, you'll see it as pretty common in some books, so uh, rather than change it, whatever you want to call it. You can call it A or alpha or U or whatever U is going to be. Sometimes it's absolute, so whatever. So take, take a look. Here's the general format. Put whatever it is you've got into this form. Use this. Again, I'm not going to derive it here. You can find the derivation wherever you want. That you're not held responsible. So here, so F, just again, any, any uh, value you want. This is a calculated value. You're calculating this value from the measured values of X, Y, and Z, and you can keep going. These, A, B, and C, are simply multiplying numbers. They're not data or anything, just they're three or half, or whatever it is. We're just number like the three A. Okay? So if you got some equation, for example, if you want the perimeter of a table, you've got twice the width plus twice the length. Two width times two plus two length. That's the perimeter. That's one example, and any, anything else. So how do you get, that is, you've got some uncertainty in this measurement, some uncertainty in this measured value, y, some uncertainty in z. Convert all those to absolute, and then find the uncertainty for your result. You do this. The absolute uncertainty of your calculated result, e, of that calculated result, f, is equal to, be careful, especially the first time through, the square root of the whole thing, A, that multiplier, times the absolute uncertainty of X, quantity, the whole thing, squared, it looks like Pythagorean theorem, doesn't it? And there's some connection here. Plus B times the absolute uncertainty of Y, quantity squared, it doesn't matter that this is subtractive. You're still using that, and it still increases the uncertainty. Okay. Plus the number out in front here times the absolute uncertainty of that measured value, quantity squared. And you just keep on going as far as you do. And that's the absolute uncertainty of f. Want the relative uncertainty? Take this number, divide it by f, want, you can multiply times 100%. That's how you deal with that. For example, perimeter of a table. Okay, so pause and, and review that as you need it. Let's go on to multiplying and dividing. Propagation of uncertainty when you're multiplying and dividing in equations. Um, wow. Sorry. Multiply and divide. So, if you're just using the numbers and not that plus minus uncertainty thing, 
Then what you focus on now are the sig figs. And the number of significant figures in your result, after you multiplied and divided, is equal to the number of significant figures in the term with the least significant figures. So for example, 42 times 2 is 84. Two sig figs, one sig fig. Two sig fig, I'd write that step and then I'd say oh, 80 units. The units would be the units of this times the units of that, whatever they are. But I'll leave that. So it'd be 80. This times this. Again, the units would be the units of this times the units of that. This has two sig figs, this has three, because it's 2.00, it doesn't matter. My result is 84, one zero, but two sig figs, that's fine. I leave it there. Same with division. 300 divided by 25. Well, 25 times 4 is 100. We have three of those, so that's going to be 12. How many sig figs? Well, two, certainly. One, unless it's being unclear, like a lot of textbooks. So if I said, okay, this is 12, two sig figs, one, I'm going to have to go here, and I would make a note. If 300 is one sig fig, SF, San Francisco Giants and Miners and stuff, uh, but, but this might really, they might be meaning 3.0 times 10 to the 2 or 3.00 times 10 to the 2. So that's a very bad way to write that number. Um, so you have to say, you know, maybe it's whatever. But this one says 2. Okay. Adding and subtracting numbers, you look at the decimal place. The limiting term there. Multiplying and dividing, you look at the same figs the limiting factor there. Okay. Uh, in the, excuse me. That should be factor. Okay. Multiply or divide values with, now when you've got the plus minus some uncertainty that we got, how do you do that? Well, first, you convert all to the relative uncertainty. Again, you can think about this, but we're not going to do that right now. So you've got to use relative uncertainty now. The equation looks identical to the last one, but you're using relative. Okay. So here's F. That's our calculated value. And we want to know what's the plus minus on it. Here is just some any number. Maybe it's the number pi. Pi is a number, right? Uh, 3.14, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 3, half, whatever it is. Measured value, measured value, measured value. Some number, some number, some number, right? So x, y, and z are measured to some power. What's the relative uncertainty of f? You do it the same way. You take now the power A times the relative uncertainty of this guy, the quantity squared, plus the power B times the relative uncertainty of Y, quantity squared, plus, it doesn't matter if it's divided, it's still increasing the uncertainty, the power C times the relative uncertainty of this measured value Z, quantity squared, square root, and that's the relative uncertainty of f. And if you want to know the absolute, take the relative uncertainty times the value, and that's a percent of that value, and you get how much for the absolute uncertainty of f. So it's a juggling act, absolutely. That's a headful, so a good thing we have pause and rewind on this. And you just got to play with it. For example, a volume would be the product of, of three things. Um, density would be mass divided by a volume. So first you got to get the volume, which is right, length times width times height width or something like that. And then you've got mass divided by that. Uh, speed might be a distance over time, average speed. Um, 
So this works for any number of those kinds of things. And we're good. Uh, all right. Cheers. <laughs>